Beyond the Bounce, presented by ZTE. I'm your host, Byron Bogar, and joining me today, friend of the show, Coach Bob <laughs> McKinnon. Welcome back to the show, Coach. Hey, always good to be with you. So, Coach, you just got back in town. What, a couple weeks? You've been in town for a couple weeks now, right? A couple weeks, uh, you know, started training camp. Okay. And I was actually in uh, before that for the uh, Mavericks training mm-hmm. camp as well. Uh, spent uh, 14 days there and, and uh, had a great time, you know, learning uh, all the stuff under Coach Carlisle and his staff, mm-hmm. and uh, in order to implement it with our with our team here. So uh, it, it's been it's been a good month, month and a half here. Now, as you're relaxing in in the summertime, but it's never really relaxing because basketball never sleeps. Uh, how do you get ready to go? How do you get your mind ready for a training camp a couple weeks out before it gets started? Well, you know, uh, like you said, it never sleeps, you know. So this summer I, I did uh, some camps and clinics in uh, China and in uh, Mexico a lot. Um, and then um, I was also in, in Summer League with the Mavericks mm-hmm. at uh, both Orlando and mm-hmm. La Vegas Summer League. So Pulled home a championship had, in had, Orlando. Uh, brought home a championship mm-hmm. in Orlando <laughs> with our team there. And Motley hitting a game winner to win the oh, championship. Yeah. Can't tell so, me not Kobe. Uh, yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> so it was, it was uh, you know, it's kind of always a process going on. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, you know, I did get to go home uh, the first part of September and, and spend some time at home. And, you know, you just kind of gear up and get ready to go. And, and then once I hit Mavs training camp, then it's all a learning process and and trying to figure out you know what from the Mavs we can use with our team and, mm-hmm. and with the talent that we have that mm-hmm. the Mavs have us and you know we want the terminology and everything we do to be the same as the Mavs it's just we can't do the whole package mm-hmm. you know because of the player chains that we have now you have two younger sons what's our ages again coach uh, well Brennan is a uh, sophomore in high school mm-hmm. And uh, 16, and, and uh, you know he's got his learner's permit, oh, so oh, you know the, the people luck. in Chapel Hill are a little, little Ooh, shaky right out. now on that. <laughs> and then uh, Ryan is in seventh grade, and they both play basketball, correct? Both play basketball. Summer and, league? Uh, Did they play summer? Uh, Brennan played uh, summer, played AAU, and, and and Ryan plays in the summer. And then Ryan just got done running cross country. Ooh. Uh, it was his grade school and uh, did a real good job with that. And then we just found out Brennan just went through tryouts for his uh, high school JV team and just found out yesterday that he made it. Congratulations so, uh, to B. Yeah, so we're, we're happy about now, that. Now, the reason I ask, Coach, you're a little fiery at times with, <laughs> here with Texas Legends. How, are, how is dad, Coach, in the summer league, in the summer game, AAU games with the kids? Well, I, you know, I go to the games. I just watch. That's what they all say, you know, Coach. I, I just sit there and, and I try not to, to, you know, voice my opinion and stuff. Uh, I just want them to have fun and play hard. And if they're not playing hard, uh-huh. then they'll problem. hear about it. Yeah, now, that's about the problem. Refs? The lovely ref youth officials of America. I, 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 I think the refs do a great job on every level. I've never had a problem with any referee on any level, so I, I think it's all good. Awesome. Well, let's get right into it. You mentioned uh, you spent some time with the Mavericks at training camp. Uh, we definitely want to have the kind of the same plays. Now, is that kind of difficult running the exact same uh, offense and terminology and everything when you have different rosters? No, because you know there's uh, there's a whole there's a big mass playbook, mm-hmm. and, and you know both offensively and defensively. So you know we take out of there what we feel fits our personnel, mm-hmm. and then go with it from there. And and that way, you know, like with the two is this year, Jonathan Motley and Gene Clavel, they don't have to learn new things and new mm-hmm. t- you know terminologies. Mm-hmm. All they have to do is worry about coming and getting better. Mm-hmm. And and, uh, and anybody who you know goes back and forth between the Mavs and and, and the Legends, it just you know, we can't do all the Mavs plays and, mm-hmm. and everything they do again because we do have, you know, last year we had, what, 24 guys mm-hmm. suit up and play a game for yeah. us. So you can't teach all that to everybody all the time, but you can take certain things out that really fit what what our personnel is and play with that. Now, you mentioned Jonathan Monty and G. G. Covell. Uh, how do you think the two way, the addition of two-way players and two-way contracts is going to be beneficial to the league this season? I think it's a great thing, um, you know, because uh, they get an opportunity to be really a part of the Mavs and, and know that the Mavs are invested in, in them. And, and I think it's, it's a great motivator, you know, for all those players. And then it's a motivator for the other players in our league because they see that there's opportunities, great opportunities every day, mm-hmm. you know, and it's not just call-ups anymore. Mm-hmm. There's another layer to it. So uh, I think it's a great addition. Now, before we get into Legends training camp, 
the here at the Texas Legends, we didn't have a first round pick this year due to us trading that for Quincy a AC. We want to say hey to Quincy out there in Brooklyn. Hey, Quincy, well worth <laughs> it. Do it. I would do it again in a heartbeat. Not looking back at all, enjoying his time. Never, never Brooklyn. love it, love it, love it. <laughs> uh, so we had, it, but we did have a second round pick, and we d drafted John Gillen out of Syracuse. Why don't you tell the fans a little bit? Uh, what we can expect to see out of him this season. You know, John's an explosive point guard. And, um, you know, he actually played uh, at Carroll State with uh, J.J. Avila, you know, and, and, and G. Clavel. Mm -hmm. So uh, before he transferred to Syracuse. So uh, he's an explosive guy. Uh, he's got to learn, you know, uh, the pro game a little mm -hmm. bit and, and how to defend on the pro level. Mm -hmm. But uh, he's an exciting player. And then going, going with that, we got some returners back. You mentioned Jamil Warney. Uh, we have Brandon Ashley joining us again this season, along with J.J. Avila, yes. <laughs> Kyle Collinsworth, and Keith Hornby, and Bryson Fonville. How important is it to get that big number of returning players? Well, I'll tell you, what, we got seven. Um, seven coming back, if, you know, if you count Justin mm -hmm. Dentman in there as well as mm -hmm. a returning player. And uh, we lead the league in returning players. And I think it just shows you. Uh, the commitment that our organization has to development and to furthering players along their career, that players want to come back. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the next most uh, high in the league is three. Mm -hmm. You know, we've more than doubled that. So, you know, I think it just speaks to what our organization does for the players and, and how we treat the players here. And then a couple of slight differences between a G League training camp and an NBA training camp. Would you say they're more competitive? You had, in the NBA, you already have guys that are kind of getting into shape. Uh, would you say that the G League training camp is a little bit more competitive because you know that guys are really looking for that job? Well, I, I think, you know, the, we're not coming into camp getting anybody in shape. Mm -hmm. They better be in shape mm -hmm. or, or they're going to be gone. Mm -hmm. and, and that's happened, mm -hmm. you know. And, and sure uh, you know, in the NBA, some of the veteran guys, you know, have a chance to get into shape through training camp. And we don't have that luxury because our guys are trying to get to that next thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the next thing being the NBA. And, and so, you know, guys coming to our camp, no, we're not getting them into shape. They better be ready to go. And that's definitely goal number one of yours since your time here is getting guys that call up to the NBA. We led that in the G League last season. Are there any uh, hopefuls people, to names to look out for that where we can hopefully bring back? Oh, I, I think we've got a roster title? full. You know, uh, you, you, you start, you know, Brandon Ashley, who's in Mavs camp, uh, who's with us as a returning player. I think he's got a great chance. Uh, Jamil Warney coming off the summer he had, you know, MVP mm -hmm. in the in the mm -hmm. for USA basketball Bully season. FIBA. Yeah, <laughs> I mean he's you know incredible. Uh, Kyle Collinsworth, Justin Dentman. Uh, I mean, they're, Justin's had call-ups in the mm -hmm. past, and I think you know you look at some of the injuries to guards in the NBA right now. Uh, you know, if I'm an NBA team, I gotta be looking Justin mm -hmm. Dentman right now, mm -hmm. you know, and that's right now, you know, and and uh, and then you know. Uh, we got, uh, you know, we're first in the waiver work mm -hmm. right now, and, and there's a couple guys coming in the league that we're excited about that, you know, in the next day or so, we could be adding to the roster. And if we add to the roster, there's another potential mm -hmm. guy. So, and you just go up and down our lineup, and, and uh, you know, I think if we do get those guys and those guys get call-ups, then the next guy steps up and mm -hmm. then they have a chance, mm -hmm. you know? So it really builds upon itself. Now you mentioned the waiver. Uh, kind of explain to the fans that kind of, that process of if a guy signs a G League contract, he goes to waivers, and then you get to scoop him up. Again. Yeah, anybody that comes in the league right now as of November 1st, uh, if they sign a contract to come in, there's a waiver order. And it, it goes 1 to 26 of the 26 mm -hmm. teams in our league. And we are first in, in the order right now. And so anybody that comes in, we get our first pick at. Mm -hmm. And if we, if we pass on them, then it goes all the way down. If everybody passes on them, then they go into what they call the available player pool, mm -hmm. that during the season, you can take those players mm -hmm. in at any time. Um, but right now we're first, so anybody that comes in, and, and uh, we do have our eye on one or two guys. So, uh, you know, it, it's not by chance. And then the reason we are first in the waiver, because we, we weren't able to get any affiliates because the, the two-way contract rule took a couple of our affiliates. Right, okay. well, you know, um, it, it's kind of funny because, you know, with Brandon Ashley and Jamil Warney, you know, were in Mavs training mm -hmm. camp, and they came to us as returning mm -hmm. players. So we didn't have to use the affiliate mm -hmm. tag on them. And then, you know, a couple other guys, P.J. Dozier got taken away on a two-way, mm -hmm. and then Malik Waynes got signed overseas. Mm -hmm. So we ended up not having any affiliates. Because of that, that boosted us to number one in, in the uh, waiver order. And then, how, how, now how is that? We all know, like you mentioned, 24 different players suited up last year. 
But that that's before you even get to get people in training camp that were getting shuffled around. Does right. that kind of change your approach when it comes to training camp time? If something gets shuffled like one day before training camp starts? No, you know, we're teaching every day. Mm -hmm. And it's just a matter of teaching and, and whoever's there. You know, I never worry about who's not there. <laughs> all, we, all we're concerned with is, is yep. who's there that day. And, yep. and then, you know, the next day it can change. Mm -hmm. And the one thing you learn if you're coaching our league is, is number one, you better be a good teacher. Mm -hmm. And number two, you better be flexible. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about physically <laughs> flexible. You know, because everyone knows my hips. I'm not physically <laughs> flexible. Me too. I'm getting washed too these days, Coach. Now, we, we've been mentioning these two-way players. One got away from us. He signed a two-way deal out there in Los Angeles Clippers. He was a fan favorite here in Frisco. Uh, I'm kind of on the, if you're not with us, uh, you're against this train. Uh, but I, we wish him well, and that's in C.J. Williams. Have you got a chance to talk to C.J.? Yeah, I actually talked to him yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, Jamil Warney was FaceTime with him, and mm -hmm. I happened to walk in, and, and I talked to C.J., and and, uh, you know, I told CJ, you know, he, uh, uh, he looks like 10 years older from what he was <laughs> last year. So they must be stressing him uh -huh. out there with the yeah. Augusta Atlantis oh, yeah. Clippers. Oh, yeah. So that's, that's I don't name. know what that's they're doing mouthful. out there, but that, that California lifestyle, you know, <laughs> it must be something. That's awesome, Coach. Now, uh, let's get into it. Let's get away from basketball a little bit. Uh, you've also, and the Texas Legends have also been big in community. Uh, what kind of things do you have on the radar as the season gets going as a, in the terms of community events? Well, you know, uh, we're, we're, like you said, it, it's, it's, I think it's one of our main mission goals as a Texas, in the Texas Legends organization, you know, it is you know, our, our two biggest things are player development and community. And uh, you, one, one A, you know, mm -hmm. however you want to put it. And, um, you know, we, we got involved with Children's Hospital here in Frisco last year, and, and we're trying to up that. Uh, Special Olympics, I, I'd like to get more involved there. Um, school visits, we'd like to be more involved. So I, I think you see, we trend more towards kid-friendly things mm -hmm. and doing things with kids. Uh, so if anybody has anything out there, you know, please contact our organization. Um, you know, that's what we're here for. And that's and, on top of the 24 charity jersey night each season, right? Yes, Coach? yeah, and, and you know, again, our organization, that's not nothing that uh, is new with me. That, that's that been, the, the, you know, one of the stallmarks. I think uh, the Texas Legends has won the award every year for most community appearances by, by a D-League mm -hmm. team. And uh, that's not going to change now that we're in the G League. <laughs> just one little initial off. Huh? Just, just, just moving up initial wise, I guess. Now, during the summer. They skipped the E and the F, by the way. I'm not sure what happened. There. I don't know. I, I'm going to be the A League one day, maybe. <laughs> All right, so we, we talked about your summer. Now, I found out that you have a little interior decorator uh, design background coach because we had a remade locker room back here and most of it is what i'm hearing came from your design work no i can't take credit for that that, that was that was kyle and, and you from uh and you kyle matt morales and, and our staff the, the Brittany's, Brittany win Brittany mm -hmm. paint team effort. Um, it was all a team effort mm -hmm. and, and blake uh blake i mean you guys did a tremendous job i i kind of just you know threw in my two cents every now and then and, and as they'll tell you my two cents are worth about one now we're missing the heated the, the heated seats that you did you ask for yeah, I, I do like the heated seats, you know, but, but it, you know, today it's 90 out. Mm -hmm. So, I'll, like, I actually, it's nice. My car from Kia, I have I have the option of heated and air-conditioned really? seats. Really? Wow. Oh, the Kia, it's unbelievable, the, the car that, that I wow. have from Kia. So, yeah, so I'm, I, I was riding in style today, man. You have today, the panoramic man. roof and all I that, I do. Too. I'm looking, you know, I'm, I do everything in that car but drive it. Now, what it do you, drives itself. What are you listening to in your Kia? Uh, you know, I'm old school. You know, today at practice, we actually had Throwback Thursday on, mm -hmm. our, on our music and uh, Coach now, Stone, Coach Hamilton. how throwback did we Hamilton. get? You know these youngsters. Back to the 90s. Okay. We ooh, went ooh, back ooh, to ooh, the ooh, 90s. Ooh. And, and what we told our players, is it was going to be men with music, not boys with noise today. <laughs> Just making noise. Mumble Just, rap, I yeah, think oh, is what they yeah, call yeah. it. I said, I said yeah, we're, we're, we're going with music today, fellas, not noise. <laughs> now we're about to hop on a bus here in what, about 24 hours, wouldn't you say, or so, uh, and head down to Austin. Uh, why don't you give us a little preview of that game, season opener? Well, you know, Austin's very good. You know, they, they got the uh, Spurs affiliates and the two ways from the street, Matt Costello and, and, and Burton's, I think, might be mm -hmm. with them. And, and uh, you know, we're not exactly sure. Rosters aren't in until 5 mm -hmm. o'clock today. So, um, Tough decisions made the, up. Here. Yeah, and, and, you know, the good thing is they, they actually play Friday night, and we'll be down there and see that game and then play them Saturday. So, um, you know, they have a new coach, Blake Ahern, mm -hmm. um, who played, uh, mm -hmm. you know, was one of the all-time great players that ever come out the of the back in the yeah. day, coach. Yeah, so, and I know, uh, you know, he'll do a great job. And, and uh, it, it's, you know, every game we play with Austin's always been good. And, and this will be another battle. I, I, I hope we're up to it. Mm -hmm. And then how, and then changing gears one more last time. 
We switched from Adidas to Nike this year. How's how's your threads treating you this I year? I love I love it. You know, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's shoot. You know, if it's free, it's me. And, and you know, I mean, this is great stuff. It's comfortable. It it, it wears well. So uh, we're really looking forward to that partnership as well. And we're on the road a couple weeks here, but we're we're in action on our home opener on November 18th. Saturday, uh, November 18th. <laughs> can't, we're counting the days. We cannot. We are counting them down. Now we have we have four games before that, mm -hmm. all on the road, and and then uh, you know we're hoping that we come back and, and, and our crowd is ready to roll because we're going to need them. Now, you, do you look at that as kind of an advantage? You get to see, you get to get, as they say, battle tested early in the season with a, with a little road uh, stretch to start? Yeah, you know, uh, schedule is what it is. And, uh, you know, we got a lot of road games early, but then you, know, you come back and you get a lot of, you get a lot of home games later. And uh, I think it's going to be an exciting schedule for our fans. We have new teams in our league. We're up to 26 in the league. Mm -hmm. I think the talent is the highest it's ever been in the league. Mm -hmm. With the two-way contracts, with the new teams, with 26 of the 30 NBA teams being affiliated now. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and you see things on the horizon. We're going to be 30 for 30 in mm -hmm. two years. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and, and the talent level is the best it's ever been in, in, in our league. I agree with you. The coaching level is the best it's ever been in our league. So I, I think it's an exciting time and exciting time for our fans. Well, we're excited. The phones have been ringing off the hooks and getting ready for that home opener on November 18th. Uh, we look forward to getting some wins on the road before then. And, Coach, before we get out of here, we've been getting everybody's all-time greats. I need your new all-time great list of NBA all-time before we get out of here. All-time NBA greats? Um, all-time. Okay, or basketball if you want to throw a little curveball. Well, you it. know, in our family, okay, like uh, my son Ryan always talks about who's the GOAT. Uh-huh. You know, and, and so we do GOATs of the, of okay. the G League now. Oh, really? You know? Oh, yeah. So <laughs> so in Ryan's mind, uh, Jameel Warney is the GOAT yeah. of the G League. Yeah, you know? okay. And, and uh, so we start with Jameel, and, and then, uh, you know, you can go back to, you know, Justin Demon would, would be in that category. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so Blake Ahern, you know, would, would be one of the all-time uh, I don't know greats, the fans right? are ready all the way uh, here for You know, yeah. yeah <laughs> You can go back. I mean, there's some great players who have played in our league. Mm -hmm. You know, guys. Who, Chris Anderson, the first ever pick. Very first. In in, in the Bird D League history. Birdman. Birdman <laughs> playing in NBA Finals. Uh -huh. You know, and and uh, so yeah. At our house, uh, we go uh, the greats nice. and, the, and the goats in the D League now. Nice. Well, thanks for joining, <laughs> taking time out of your schedule today, Coach, and joining us here on the show. And thank you for joining us here on Beyond the Bounce, presented by ZTE. Until next time, we'll see you later. See you on the 18th. <laughs>